not overly happy where I am at the moment, but like this, what I really do about it, I have to take a uh, I suppose put priority on the studies over the last year with the leaving cert, but now in the last three weeks I've kind of took a bit of time off, off after I finished the exams to a week or two and now I'm quite straight back into training. So over the last three weeks we've been straight into the, the kind of a focus on a bit of a gain a bit of stone over the exams, just sitting around on desks and everything. But uh, uh, 10 pounds gone already and uh, I raced back in March maybe and uh, in the pool training I'm TV and you know, what I did in March so it's, uh, it's looking fairly positive now going into Montreal. I did actually do transition year to, uh, if I ended up transition year I would have been doing the Leaving Cert the year of London so that's kind of the only break I took but um, in terms of how it affected it now like, um, I have to say what a big negative in terms of uh, in terms of trying to study and train, but like you, you get, you have to get on with it. One sense it took a lot, a lot out of me uh, mentally to have it. You, you're trained the whole time. You're sitting there in school trying to get the homework done, and the teachers not looking because you couldn't do it the night before. So you're falling asleep at the desk and everything. But uh, like, it went, it went well. Like and it went as professionally as it could have gone. Like, initially, we had decided that I was going to go, but now obviously we, we had to rethink that and decide it was better. Um, in terms of being one for for Rio, I, I don't really think so because, uh, like, going off to college next year, everything's going to change. New coach, new diet, new uh, training regime, strength conditioning coach, everything. Like new new house up in Dublin, away from home, away from the parents. So this is kind of just my last, I suppose, my last hurrah at home. And I think I, I'm not going to, I'm not taking it too seriously because. I'm not in the position where I can't take it too seriously. Like it's not going to be a case where I'm going to go over there and do personal bests and win medals all around me. It's going to be a case where I go over, I do my best, and hopefully we'll get something out of it. I hopefully I'll be in a good enough position to get something out of it. Like, but um, but it's not the, the start of the real cycle for me. I think we we have to see what things are, what's going to go, how things are going to go next year before we start planning that far down the road. It's great to have a, another coach, a coach at the John Keeley, that definitely be important to gold medals over his career and he's going to our ex Olympian. It's great to have a, another pool of knowledge and experience behind me and to be in the middle of you, this is what essentially is another high performance centre within UCD and have all that around me and it's just going to be great in the 50 metre pool alone. Like I mean, we, our Olympians only race in the 50 metre pool. Usually, so the fact that I'll be able to train full time in the 50 meter pool is going to be huge, going to be a huge uh, benefit to me. With Rio in mind, uh, 400, same thing, old gold in, in London, I want to do another gold and world record. And um, I think world record bonus well, sitting at a 447, I think. I think I can bring that down to 40. And I, I hope to bring it down to 40 over the next couple of years. That, that I, I very much I don't want to leave it. The man who came before me, Andrew Olsen, he had a great run, and in fairness, if I hadn't come along, his record probably would have lasted a lot longer than I hope it's going to be. You know what I mean? But uh, I want to leave one that's a lasting legacy. Uh, apart from 400, the 103, uh, 0 0.9 second off a medal in that in London. So that's kind of what I'm going to be focusing on because the 100 is going to bring up the 400 like the 400 like, kind of at the end of my tether and kind of learning stuff about the 400 and developing endurance muscle and everything I think that to improve the 400 it's going to have to be uh, sprints and stuff that I improve on uh, that's kind of my main goal I kind of like to diversify a bit into the individual medley and stuff like that but that's less important it's less uh, I won't say less guaranteed but there's less chances of medals in those events so because I'm just naturally a freestyler, so i would be focusing on the freestyle. The only other thing is the dive, but the major disadvantage to me in the short distance is a. Uh, you know, I'm very dive, but kind of not considering the awkward to dive, the full leg on with the other. It's kind of. I played it safe so far because if you lose balance on the block, you're immediately disqualified. So I kind of played it safe by starting in the water, but now I think it's time to develop that and use it as another little bit of an edge to match me with everyone else. It's, it's hard to say the way Paralympic relays work is there's it's done on a point system that the classification uh, points uh, like the more you add the points up of everyone in the relay and there's certain caps. The way we are kind of sitting puts us at a low end of a high point class, which means that we're not going to be competitive realistically like but 
fact is we're, we're getting the bike experience for relays like with the, the four lads, the four of us lads are extremely experienced swimmers like we've been to World Championships, Europeans and uh, London and I think what we're doing now is we're getting ready and training ourselves and when the sport the sport's growing there's more people coming on board when they get to the level they need to be where they're ready we'll be ready and know enough about relays and know how to swim them and know how to lead a relay team that we'll be able to be competitive and hopefully be able to win.